What's going on folks? Hope everybody's having a blessed productive day. With that being said, let's get right to it. All right, so today I have something different for you guys. So as you guys know, I've been in the system in and out and throughout the whole time in the course of my incarceration, I encountered a lot of things. And majority of the time that I was incarcerated, I was in the main lines and it's nothing to brag about. It's nothing to be proud of. But however, this channel started off on my experiences of being incarcerated. So with that being said, let me get right to household business. <laughs> All right, so when I was incarcerated in, in the prison system, like I mentioned before, and I also made a video in regards that, you know, you have to properly secure a pedazo, um, household business, wheelas, kites, whatever the case might be, right? That you either have to put them in your anal cavity or orally. It is very important for you not to get caught with any household business due to the fact that some of the household business that you get provided with is really vital information and you got to try your hardest not to get caught with certain hot material due to the fact that a lot of individuals have gotten caught with certain vital information and the outcome of that was that some of them got removed and either some of them knew the consequences that was coming behind that ended up rolling it up and the people that actually stayed ended up receiving cleanup and when you receive cleanup, whether you have 20, 10 days, even the same day that you're going home, and if, if it's time for you to go do it, you're gonna have to do it, you can't refuse it. We're gonna stick to the basis as of two close calls that I had when I was holding hot material. And when I was in Pleasant Valley, like I told you guys before, I had pulled a free staff, and the free staff would bring me in anything that I wanted. Anything that you could think of, I would have in my cell. And during this time, I had a cell phone. Um, my cell had a cell phone and we had a lot of clavo out, which I just had dropped it due to the fact that, you know, I just had came back from yarn. And I had the clavo, the homie had a couple, two, three caps of some weed, you know, to have out due to the fact that I like to smoke during program hours. He also did like to smoke. And so we will burn up every time before we go out to yard, you know, so we could have a good time. After shift change, usually when I was there, shift change will be from like two to three um, and they'll do rotation. So the morning staff will go home and then the afternoon staff will come in and they'll do their rounds. They'll walk around doing the rounds, checking in people's doors. And um, sometimes, you know, they open up the door and they'll have you step out so they could search the cell. And it'll be randomly, like at any given moment, they could come and they just could be like, hey, you know what, step out, let me search your room. And during this occasion, I was in the back seat, like from the cell, you have the door, then you have the beds in the side, the toilet. And in the back, there's like a little desk with a stool and I was doing some household business and I was taking out some more clavo and I had my phone next to it. I had those big speakers, I was playing music. It was like a little party, like we were just having a kickback, right? And there was day room outside, there was yard going on and this is during shift change. And so I tell the homie, that's my cellie, I'm like, hey, you know, keep an eye, bro. So, um, you know, just keep an eye, make sure that the cops don't roll up on us because I have a lot of household business out here and I have the clavo that I'm supposed to turn into the house. And if I get caught with that cloud, even though I'm bringing it in, I'm responsible for it. So I got to replace it and I got to make sure that it lands um, due to the fact that I already had told the elders like, hey, look, check this out. I have this cloud. So, boom, you know, here it is. And so they're waiting for me at yard, but they gave me an hour, you know, come grab everything together, put it together, properly secure it, um, do what I got to do. Mind you, like I said, the homie had a few caps. He's supposed to roll up a joint and we're supposed to spark up before we go to yard. And this individual, the only thing that he has, he has the little caps, you know, and he's about to roll up and he gets sidetracked in prison. We have like these little cubicles where you put your TV and you put other little things that are important to you. And he's rolling up a joint out of a Bible book. That's what we do. Like we roll up joints out of the Bible because the Bible paper is easier to burn and easier to roll. And this individual is doing that. So he gets sidetracked, pays no mind to the door, pays no mind to the calls. Anytime that a cop passes by, they say, hey, uh, one time on the tier or whatever the, the call might be, right? And I had the music on loud, so we couldn't hear it. We're all focused on doing whatever we're doing. I'm minding my own business, right? So I'm sidetracked, like I'm just right here, like doing whatever I was doing at the time. I was getting all these cloud ready and, and whatever other things that I was doing, right? Putting everything together and playing my music. And I'm over here just bobbing my head, right? And out of nowhere, I just hear the door open. And three CEOs are in the front of the door talking about, oh, step out. And so I look back, and when I look back, bro, I swear to God, I bullshit you not. I had about like three ounces of some weed already wrapped up, you know, because I was going to give it to the homie, Matt Rocha. 
And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, my whole stomach dropped, bro. Like, everything dropped. Like, I went cold, right? I'm like, oh, fuck. So I already knew the consequences. If you get caught with that amount of drugs, you will get another charge. You will go to the hole, and you will get another five to 10 years added to your time. Uh, especially if they don't put no gang enhancement saying that you're bringing it in to further the gang. And so I'm like, fuck. I have the phone, and then I have all the clavo, and I'm wearing some shorts and, and, and a white tee, right? And I'm just like, fuck what should i do and meanwhile the homies are like oh yeah what's up you know like he knows already that he has to entertain him because i have shit out and so he turns around and starts talking to him like oh why you guys want to search our cell you know kind of giving me time so i grab the bundles and i throw it in my in my pocket bro boom and then i grab the the phone when i'm standing up like i just put the phone to the side boom and we walk out and then luckily bro like usually what they do they pat you down right they're like oh empty all your pockets and they're like, all right man it's good it's good and so i get the phone i get the cloud we'll put it in my pockets and i just walk out right and i stand up and i start walking out the home is going and um i'm shitting myself bro like i'm hella scared right because i already knew the consequences that's gonna fall behind that with the nf and with the cops bro because you know i was about like a few months to go home i'm like fuck i'm stressed out right i'm like damn i gotta make it to the homie and so we gotta go across the day room because the side of the day room that I was at, it belonged to the Sureños, and the other side belonged to the homies. So I had to walk all the way over there. As I'm walking, bro, like I feel like at any given moment, they're gonna call me to tell me to turn around, and I already knew what I had planned. I'm gonna run to the homie cell, and I'm gonna try to put everything underneath there, and he's gonna have to flush it. Um, but I already knew I'm going to the hole. And so I'm just going and going and going. Luckily, he didn't call me right, and the homie already knew. He was already on the door because they knew I'm bringing shit in, so they know my cell is hot. Um, so that everybody's watching, right? I go to the homie like, hey, look, check it out, grab this, grab this, right? So I pull out the phone and I slide it, boom, and I pull out the clavo, and there's like this little big holes on the side of the doors, and I start sliding in the clavo, boom, boom. So like, oh shit, you got all this? I'm like, yeah, bro, properly secure, bro. Like, hoop that shit, bro. Like, put that phone away real quick, bro, because if they see me here talking to you, they might come and raid that shit, bro. It's like, oh, don't even trip, fool, don't even trip. So I'm like, but I'm gonna, I got you, bro. But you're gonna take care of me. I'm like, yeah, don't even trip, bro. I got you, don't even trip, fool. Like, I'll give you a full phone. I'm just not trying to get caught with this shit, bro. I could deal with the NF, but I don't want to get no more five to 10 years added to my sentence, bro. Like, I fucking hate doing time. Like, doing time is the worst thing that you can imagine, bro. Like, I would hate doing time, bro. Like, I hate the program. Like, you have to wake up, do your burpees, go to school, come back, go to yard, deal with the homies, the politics, the wheelas, the kites. Like, it's just so much, right? It gets overwhelming. And to be there for like 10, 15 years straight, like, bro, like, like I, I i i couldn't do it bro you know what i'm saying so i was just like fuck that shit bro like i need to you know what i'm saying like i need to like do my thing and get out but that ended up happening bro they searched the cell they call us back in they're like, all right turn around so they put us on handcuffs i'm like what the fuck bro like you know what's going on right and they're like oh you know like we found something and i'm like fuck so i'm in my head i'm like damn bro what the fuck like did i leave something like did i drop a bundle i'm like no i only had three right so i'm over here questioning myself like damn bro what did i do what did i leave i look at the homie and i'm like fool like what the fuck and i'm like oh those fucking little weed caps and i tell him where's the weed oh and he's like oh oh fuck bro like i, I tried to block for you and i forgot it i'm like bro like what the fuck so what this dude did he panicked, he got scared, and tossed the weed, bro. Instead of putting it in his pocket or putting it in his mouth or swallowing and doing something, he got scared, fumbled the bag, and threw it. So I was just like, oh my God, bro. Like, now we both gotta go to the hole. Now we both gotta get charged, bro. Like, what the fuck? We ended up getting a 115, right? We are shackled up. They, they take us to the front, to the little uh, isolation little cages. They leave us there for like almost a full day, right? And I'm not sure if if Matt and the other elders talk to the COs, but after, like, we didn't end up going to the hole, right? We just ended up getting the 115. Um, the following day, IGI came and talked to us, pulled us out of school, and they're like, all right, what, what's going on? And I told IGI, hey, look, check this out. I can't talk to you by myself. You know the protocol, like, I need somebody here with me. And so they ended up pulling another homie out from school. The CEOs, they know the protocol. Like if they see me talking to you by yourself, bro, like they're pretty much saying like, I'm telling, I'm debriefing or, you know, whatever the case might be, right? So they don't even want to bring that negative attention towards us. So they're all right, it's good. So they bring the other homie and I'm chopping it up with them, right? And I'm like, look, man, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like there was nothing in the cell, man. Like they're like, oh, why are you bringing in drugs? Like, and then during this time I had no visitation, right? And the other homie, he wasn't getting no love. Like he had nobody looking out for him. So nobody was coming to see him. And um, 
I'm like, man, none of us get visitations. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not bringing nothing in, man. Like, I don't know. Like, it must have came from outside. It got kicked in when you guys walked in. I don't know, man. I don't I don't have anything. Like, all right, well, we're going to drug test you. I'm like, all right, for sure. And I'm dirty as a motherfucker, bro. Like, that week prior to that, I had brought in some Norcos. I was smoking, so I'm dirty. You know what I'm saying? I'm dirty as hell. I'm like, ah, damn, bro. So I'm like, all right, for sure. They're all right, so we're going to take you back to the building. Um, and then we're gonna give you some time to go uh, to go to the bathroom. Do you need to go to the bathroom already? And I'm like, no, I, I need to wait. And then they're like, all right, well, go lock it up in your cell. So they bring the my cellie back, and we're in the cell, right? And we and we're drinking water, and we're like, damn, bro, fuck, like I'm hella dirty, bro. What are we gonna do, right? And then the homies are like, oh, don't even trip, bro. Look, um, grab a glove because we we'll have gloves, right? Because we always have gloves in the cell or surround wrap due to the fact that. Uh, we always hooping stuff, right? We we always putting shit in the ass or, or in the mouth, and so we always kissing and everything, and we always have to have gloves. And so he's like, "Look, bro, like just put water in a glove, tie it around your boxers, and then when you go, just make a little hole and then just pour the water, but throw a little grain of the coffee so it could make the water look brown." And I'm like, "Oh fuck it, I'm gonna try it." You know, I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna try it." And so they, they call me out, right? They call him out first and I'm, I'm looking to see if it's, how it's gonna, gonna go down, right? Cause we go down and like, they took off our shirt and then they left us in boxers, bro. So I'm like, fuck. So I put double boxer on. So the boxer behind it, I wrapped the glove, right? But I didn't put that much water. I just put enough water where like, I'm gonna just give them a tiny bit of urine sample so they could get, you know, get their little sample. And so he tied it up, I tied it up and we put warm water with a little grain of uh, coffee shook it up and when we shook it up right it turns all brown and so i tied it up to my boxers and i wait for the homie to go out so he goes out in the sandals and just in boxers nothing on right just boxers and sandals and um they have the homies outside keeping post right and the only reason as to why we could come out in sandals is due to the fact that the seals are giving us a directive to come out in sandals that we can come out with shoes nothing on we just you know we're doing a urine sample and so it's okay with the homies that you know we have to do that the homie comes out first right and he's doing his thing. There's three COs. Um, one of them is watching the homie, and then another one is it's with his back to to the other CO, and then the other one is just chopping it up with the other CO. And um, so they're just conversating back and forth, right? And so the homie ends up getting away. Like he does it, comes back laughing, like yeah, like I did it, right? And I'm like, all right, it's my turn. But I'm not even gonna lie, bro. Like I'm scared. Uh, my stomach is turning. I'm just like, damn, bro. Like I better not get caught because if they catch me, take my eyes to a hole. Because I'm trying to, you know, cheat the P test. So I'm like, damn. So I go out, right? Boom, boom, boom. And then the same scenario. Two COs and then the other one watching, right? So they put me right there in the shower, and I go to the shower, right? And the CO is just watching me, bro. Like this dude is literally like, I don't know if you guys ever got in P test by a PO, but they doing the exact same thing, just looking at your cock. And I'm just like, damn, bro. And I tell the CEO, like, ah, damn, bro. Like, like, damn, like, do you really want to just sit here and stare at me? Like, I have nothing on, bro. Like, come on now. Like, you already know they found thing in my, in my cell. You know I'm dirty, bro. Like, just come on, man. Like, stop looking at me. And then he's like, oh, all right, for sure, man. He's like, no, but you know, I got to do my job. And I'm like, yeah, man, but come on, man. Stop looking at me like that. That's kind of weird. Don't you think it's weird you're looking at another man trying to pee? And like he, like, I don't know if I got to his ego, like he felt some type of way, right? And like, he kind of turned around and said, said something to the CEO. As soon as he said something, I coughed. Uh, and I made a little rip on the glove, you know, so I don't make that sound of a plastic ripping. I'm like, uh, and then I start pouring it in there, right? And then I pull out my, my wiener and I start shaking it. And I'm like, damn, this is all I could go, bro. And then he's like, all right, that's good. That, that, that should be good enough. And then he looks at it, right? And then I guess the cups have like a temperature. He's like, damn, why is it so hot? I'm like, well, I don't know, bro. It's coming out of the system. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it comes out hot. It's like, no, like, this is harder than what it's supposed to be. I'm like, well, it's a hot environment, bro. I don't know. What do you expect? Like, you've seen me that I was peeing, bro. Like, it came out of my penis. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. And so, all right, man. So I'm going to submit it. They ended up submitting them. Um, and I was already, like, two to three months from the house, right? During the same time, IGI tell us that they're going to refer that to the DA to see if they're going to file charges on us. So during that time, bro, I was stressed out. I'm like, damn, bro, like I'm getting caught up. I'm getting more time for this dumbass dude that couldn't even, you know, put that shit in his mouth. And I was hot, right? And so the homie, we had to do an IR. We had to tell the homies exactly as to what happened, what went down, um, who got caught with it. And then the other dude had the nerve and the audacity to tell me to tell the homies that I'm the one that dropped it. 
I'm like, bro, you fucking full of shit. Why, why would I tell the homies that, bro? I'm like, it was your fault. Like, you the one that left that shit, bro. You the one that tossed it. You the one that didn't have the boss enough to put it in your mouth, bro, and walk out with it. I'm like, you got scared. Oh, bro, bro, I was trying to keep an eye for you, bro. I'm the reason why you got away with all the other shit. I'm like, nah, bro. You should have properly secured that, bro. We wouldn't be in a situation if it wasn't for you, bro. Like, so here it goes, bro. Both of us get 14 days, 122, so a thousand more essay and extra duties, bro. All because we got caught with hot material. And it wasn't even my fault, bro. It's my stupid ass celly, right? But there's a rule that if anything gets found in the cell, whether it's yours or it's not, both of you guys are responsible because you guys are living in the same environment. So I was responsible as much as he was responsible. And I had to explain myself, you know, and I had told Matt Rocha during this time, like, look, bro, I'm about to go home, bro. Like, I'm more valuable to you in the streets than being here. And then I'm like, you already know what I do. You already know the things that I could provide. And I'm saying it's like, I shouldn't be here, bro. That wasn't my mistake. And then he's like, no, I know. So like, you know what? We're going to talk to the homie. So he ended up talking to the homie, right? They ended up giving him a one time and telling him, look, we ended up finding out that this was your fault and you were provided with this. So this is your material. If you guys end up getting a charge, you're going to tell the CEOs that it was yours. You're going to tell the CEOs that you're taking, you're taking full blame for it. So that fool started tripping out like, no, bro, like I'm going to get more time. Like we should both do the same time. I'm like, bro, like I'm about to go home, bro. Like you got a few years left. Like what? Like take the rap for it. That's yours. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying like, so it was a loose, loose situation, right? Because now that I come and think about it, I was kind of messed up putting all the blame on the homie, you know, like he had to take the blame all because this individual wanted me out in the streets and it happens like that all the time and that wasn't the first occasion it was other occasions that would happen with other individuals that they have to take the rap for the carnales phones weapons or whatever the case might be right and so you have to go down you're the down man and that was just one of the little quick stories that i have for you guys man i hope you guys enjoy this story uh stay tuned for more content i'm gonna try to drop a little more content for you guys man i appreciate you guys let me know what you guys think bro